Good. What are you talking? Are you talking to me? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with the Critters, where we live stream each week. Um, hang on, let me get me on here. Good morning. Where we live stream each week at 9 a.m. Eastern, um, pending on our schedule, pending on the people that we interview, and pending on my travel, which both seem to be on the rise here recently. Good morning, Pat. Um, hey, everybody. Um, so, yeah, we live stream every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. Occasionally, we'll do a Saturday night um, cocktails with the critters. Morning, Steve. Morning, Mary Lynn. Good morning, Chris. Hey, everybody. Morning, Katie. Um, occasionally, we do a Saturday evening uh, cocktails with the critters, which maybe we should do that soon. We haven't done that one in a long time, probably since October. Um but yeah, you can uh, turn on your notifications to be notified every, to be alerted every time we go live. Um, sometimes we go live throughout the week showing little special things we're doing. Um, like right now we have a newly recently adopted animal in the other room. Good morning. Oh yeah, so um, Nancy says, one year ago today, she was fleeing from Hurricane Irma. I remember that. I started searching for you, too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's for those of you that are new, my name is uh, Laura Joseph. I'm owner of the Animal Behavior Center. Um, we are an international educational center where we teach people all across the world about um, working with animals, living, loving, learning, teaching, training with animals using positive reinforcement and applied behavior analysis. Hi. My co-host, Rico and Rocky in the background. I have three more co-hosts sitting around me. Um, so this morning, we are gonna be talking about introduction to foraging. And I'm still really tired, so bear with me. <laughs> Um, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, so uh, something else I wanted to say is um, also don't forget, if you want to join our email newsletter list, you can click right here if you're on the Animal Behavior Center's Facebook page from your desktop. I know what it looks like. If you click on the left, you'll see join our email newsletter. And what I do usually every Sunday, right after coffee with the critters, is I sit down and start writing up a, um, that's interesting. I sit down and write up a, thanks Rocky, email newsletter. And I send it out usually sometime between Sunday and Wednesday. Um, so yeah, we've had a lot going on here. Rocky, that is so pretty. Today, we're going to talk about introducing your animals to foraging and for several different reasons. Foraging, and we're going to take some of your questions too. Um, Daphne says, planning to see me next year. Awesome. Good morning, Leah. I've got Quincy going to come on here with us today. Um, let me grab my coffee. That's one thing I forgot. Because each time I do a coffee with the critters, I usually like to um, present a different mug. And um, this week, you guys can probably imagine whose mug I'm going to be showing. This is a helping wing parrot rescue out of Blairstown, New Jersey that I just got back from. Um, just made a three day trek, 1100 miles um, straight through one day, broke it up into two days, coming back to adopt an animal. Many of you following us know exactly who that is. And um, that would be Sam, our blind parrot. Um, he just had both of his eyes removed. Um, and in this episode, we're going to talk about all different kinds of species. I'm going to be talking about dogs. I'm going to be talking about pigs. I'm going to be talking about birds. I'm going to be talking about raptors. I'm going to be talking about um, lemurs, giraffe, what have you. And you guys can get a lot of different ideas from um, the different. I've got a lot of pictures I'm going to show. I've got some products right here behind me we can implement. I forgot to pull a couple of them out. Oh, well, we'll do some more future foraging. 
Um, but a cheers to my good friends out at a Helping Wing Rescue in Blairstown, New Jersey. Um, I was just out there in July, and um, they hired me to come out and train their staff. I trained a staff of, they have six staff per day, training 200 parrots that are up for adoption. So, hi Rico. Rico's like, hello, don't forget about your co-host. So those of you who've been following, Those of you that have been following know that I've recently adopted, um, we take in several different animals here. We are not a sanctuary, we are not a rescue, we're an educational center where we live stream our services. And we do that through um, our, uh, hi Rico, we do that through our projects and our memberships. Um, and you can find those on our website at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. All of our services, most of them. 95% of them are via live streaming. I've got this big, bad, beautiful center with several different numerous species of residents. Why not live stream what I do, how I do it, where I start, how, um, how I introduce to foraging, why? Anybody want to take a guess at what I'm reinforcing behind me. Um, yeah, so here's Sam. He is our, he is now, as of what, two days ago, our 23 year old blind blue fronted Amazon. Um, he hit, damn. He is blind. Um, his story is um, his owner had passed away, and um, his family, their, Sam's family, took on the bird, took on Sam, and they weren't that familiar with birds. Um, they tried to keep him, but they couldn't. They uh, obviously didn't want birds. Um, the owner did. So anyways, when they surrendered Sam to a helping wing two years ago, um, Sam was, um, he couldn't see, he was blind. They didn't know that. Jeannie Gilligan, Jeannie and John Gilligan, the founders of a helping wing parrot rescue, uh, noticed that immediately. It's pretty easy to tell, well, for me, to tell if an animal's blind. I've worked with several different uh, animals that are blind or um, handicapped in one way or another, and that was through a wildlife rehab center I worked with. Um, had a lot of experience with that. Um, but anyways, so Sam was surrendered, and then um, Jeannie took him to the vet, found out he had ulcers, not tumors. I keep getting them mixed up. Um, has ulcers on both eyes. So what they were having to do was capture him three times a day and medicate him. So he's never gonna see again. So Jeannie at a helping wing. And her vet both decided that it was probably more humane to just remove his eyes so he didn't have to get captured three times a day, have these drops put in. Um, so with that being said, um, I am having to counter condition a lot of work, and understandably so, counter conditioning meaning um, uh, retrain. So, you know, Training numerous species of animals really fine tunes your training skills, guys. That animal can see, hear, smell, or feel you. You are training it whether you realize it or not. The key question is, what are you training it to do? So when I was out there two months ago training the staff at a helping wing, I met Sam, asked his story. 24 hours later, filling out adoption papers. Two months later, he is now sitting in the other room. Um, he has to sit there for a couple of weeks um, for numerous different reasons. One is observation. 
Um, one is, uh, two is quarantine. Yes, we are on two separate air filtration systems. Um, three is, I just want for his comfort level because coming into this room with all these different species of animals. Hmm? Mm -hmm. We got pigs, we got dogs. Yeah, uh, this can be overwhelming. So um, introducing him to the sounds, uh, paying attention to airflow, vibration, all of that's what you have to pay attention to with the blind bird. Uh, Rico, you're not going to let me do this. Are you? He has me trained, so, and I'm okay with that. Every time he says hi, I reinforce. So this is Sam. Um, you know what Nancy asks, all serrated through injury or disease? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I'd have to find out from Jeannie. But um, good morning, Kim. Where are you, in Europe? Where are you, Kim? <laughs> I have a hard time keeping up with you. So this is Sam. Um, has both eyes removed, and as you guys may have seen on my personal page, my Laura Joseph page yesterday, we introduced him to a no, new bell. Uh, Parrot Project member Bobby Boykin um, purchased him a new bell, and I introduced it to him yesterday. That's pretty fascinating to watch. You might want to go on to uh, my Laura Joseph page and take a look. I didn't post it here because I don't want to overwhelm people with birds. I love birds. No, now you're in Texas, then. I, my number one passion is animals. My number two passion, which one? Thanks, Rock. Bridge reinforce. <laughs> my number, hey, Glorian, yay, over there in uh, Taiwan, correct, Glorian? Um, my number two passion is behavior, using applied behavior analysis. Hi, guys. Um, Peekaboo to you. I am a huge fan of dinosaurs. I, sh I should have been a paleontologist. I, If I could do life all over again, I may have gone into paleontology. Um, yeah, and my peekaboo to you. My love of dinosaurs is what got me into my fascination with birds. There's a long history of evolution there, guys, and it is amazing. Peekaboo. And uh, parrots, corvids, are some of the most complex animals I've ever worked with. And that is why I choose to uh, do a lot of work with them, but definitely not limited to. <laughs> you guys are funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so my fourth fascination is the octopus. Um, I am absolutely fascinated with octopus. And one of these days, I will have the honor of interacting with one. And I would love to um, just show I learned through animals by watching them, by training them, by empowering them through enrichment, which is our, our topic today on foraging. Studies show that if you're actually using positive reinforcement training, it's the animal's preferred form of enrichment. Um, I'm also here to show you different examples um, via live stream and via some photos I have for you. Um, predictability has its place. With Sam, the blind Amazon, I'm being very predictable in the beginning. I've only been training him for two days, um, but I wish I could turn this camera around and show you. He's he's waiting to come out of this enclosure, his enclosure, and he's waiting for training to start. I can tell. When I walked in there this morning and said hi, he was bleep, bleep. he's in there begging right now. Um, I've not seen him do that before, but anyways. Isn't that powerful? He's begging for interaction. He's begging for training. I am developing a strong form of communication Rocky, with him through training. Um, <laughs> Kim says, let me know when you want to learn to dive. Do you know one of my biggest fears? One of my biggest fears, and Nancy Forrester down in Key West knows this. What, Rocky? Is... 
the ocean. Yes. And, but fear doesn't stop me. My fear is a reinforcer for me to continue to engage because I like that adrenaline rush. Um, hey, Rocky. So uh, there's been a lot going on here, um, but let's get moving because some animals are begging for some interaction. Um, there's been a lot going on here. As you guys know, uh, I believe it was three weeks ago, I was out in Utah at Best Friends Animal Society. Um, what a fabulous place. If you guys, Rocky, if you guys have not been out there, definitely put it on your bucket list. Um, so um, something else, I mean, this is what I do pretty much 24 seven. I tried last night so hard to relax, sit down and watch TV and I couldn't, I was getting on the computer. I love what I do. When you own your own business, every day is a Monday. When you love what you do, every day is a Friday. And every day is a Friday here. I cannot wait to get out here. Um, and with that being said, this is pretty cool. Um, a couple of divisions of Ohio State University reached out to me uh, probably about a week or so ago wanting to collaborate with the Animal Behavior Center in their um, uh, veterinary medicine division, um, especially with their exotics animal club and their animal behavior club. And I, they asked me if I would collaborate with them and I said, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're going to see some things coming up um, from them. Um, something else, you're going to also see me this week. Uh, Puzzle's got a new friend. So this is a young giraffe. I am going to hit the ground running, go out there. That young giraffe is already learning. I cannot get to him fast enough. He's learning from his environment. So I want to be part of his environment and I want um, part of his environment to definitely be foraging. And I have some giraffe enrichment in here as well, believe it or not. Okay, so let's talk about foraging. What is it? And let's show some examples. One of the first things I teach any animal that comes in here is to forage for its food. Forage is... Um, searching the act of searching for food. It's one of the first, you guys pull out my internet connection. Um, I always do this around here. Quincy, don't make me give you one of these. When I do this, I'm like, you want one of these? I'm going to give you one of these. I'll see birds flying to me and dogs running to me because they know it's, you want one of these? You <laughs> <laughs> You're pushing me off screen. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's really funny. That's really funny. Uh oh, it's gonna get loud here for a minute. <laughs> okay. I need to. I need to train some. No way! I need to train my co-host. I was doing this yesterday with Levi. You see Levi, our deaf dog. Do I want dogs jumping on me? <laughs> Only if I ask them to. Only if I ask them to. There's Levi, our deaf dog. <laughs> yes. There's Quincy. <laughs> Look at Rico. Oh, watch your head. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Um. Yeah. Let's just get it out of the way, guys. Ready? Put your wings on. I want to see your wings. Put your wings on. Yeah. Yeah. Put your wings on. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. 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 See if we can get that out of the way real quick. <laughs> um, so I don't mind dogs jumping on me when I ask them to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> whatever, Rocky. Okay, where was I? Forging. Um, one of the first things I'll teach any animal that comes in here is to forage for its food. Search for its food. Why? Because it's a great occupier of time. 
And studies show, like I said, if you're actually using positive reinforcement training, it's the animal's preferred form of enrichment. People always ask me to cite that study. I have it. I have a stack of papers that I'm research papers that I'm going through about this tall for um, a presentation, a two-day workshop I'm giving in Montreal in February. Um, that study is in there, and when I find it, I will I will share it with you guys. Um, but here's the thing: we can't be training all the time. Foraging is great because. It's mentally and physically stimulating for the animal. It teaches the animal to manipulate and um, use different body parts. Um, a lot of times, like especially with wild animals, maybe something they wouldn't exactly show those body movements in the wild due to predation, uh, having to pay attention to their environment. Um, but it also takes the focus off of you because you can't be training all the time. Um, so a lot of times what we do is we use foraging here to give the animals something else to do, because if you don't give them something to do, they're going to find something to do. And, uh, it's very good chance. It's going to be something that, um, you're not going to like, uh, yeah, Daphne, I'll be in February. I'll be, in, I'll be in Montreal in February. I can't remember. It's on the website. Um, and it's on our website under schedule and events. I believe it's the first weekend, but can't remember. Um, that is a two day workshop that I am gonna be so vested in um, because we're gonna be talking about uh, working with abnormal repetitive behaviors in numerous different species. This is my first time presenting a workshop only on abnormal repetitive behaviors. Working with abnormal repetitive behaviors, that is an area that I love to work because I love to change behavior. Um, abnormal repetitive behaviors are numerous different, there's numerous different causes, um, but I will use foraging and training to change those behaviors. So here's Snow, our deaf and blind border collie. Um, just watch how she's using her um, foot to really manipulate that object, and I know border collies are kind of known for that. Um, <clears throat> uh, but this is, I mean, the complex, I mean, this is a pretty basic foraging toy. What I do is I take different types of meat spreads. I'll take canned dog food um, and freeze it in toys and then give them to them. Uh, we have a lot, we have a freezer full of toys here. Um, and animals also, studies also show, I will cite it as soon as I get through this stack of research papers and find it. Studies also show that animals prefer objects that change shape. That is why we have staff that come in here every day of the week making enrichment. And a lot of that enrichment that we make here is foraging. And the majority of that is um, enrichment items that are destructible. Uh, because if animals prefer objects that change shape, uh, that's a form of manipulation. It's a form of adding choice and control back into their environment. That's what foraging is all about. Uh, <clears throat> um, so you'll see that. Let me show a live example real quick or real slow, whatever. I got to turn this table without losing my internet connection because we're going to focus on Milo the pig. Okay. Can you guys see him? He's right there on his bed. All right, so what I'm gonna do is he's waiting for his breakfast and I'm going to put it in that jug over there and I'm also going to um, incorporate complexity because with predictability comes boredom and animals can get really bored being provided the same old foraging toy all the time. So I'm gonna I will always introduce foraging and then I increase complexity. <clears throat> okay, so here's what happens a lot of times in zoos. Um, the door is a conditioned reinforcer or, or approaching the door because um, where are they getting, the food is delivered through the door. So this is not uncommon for um, a giraffe, a primate, uh, a pig, 
what have you, sitting at the door waiting for the food. So what we teach them instead. Grab his breakfast. He knows it's coming. Another conditioned reinforcer is we teach him to station on that bed to prevent. Okay, you two need to come over here. So we teach him, standing at the door doesn't get you anything, but when you go to your bed, on your bed. Good. You go to your bed, that does get you something. And then here's his forging jug. I'm going to raise it, increase levels of complexity. We talk about this in the city project. So, so we can still get to that. Good. Hi. Raise this a little higher. Yeah, probably didn't raise it high enough. But what I do, we do this in the other room because he pretty much um, spends a lot of his time in the other room. But can you see what I'm doing? Um, what I'll do, I can't get this jug high enough. Um, I can show it to you with the dogs here too because these, this is just a water jug that we get water from. <laughs> um, and we cut holes. The complexity can come in the size of the hole and where the hole is located. So if you want to increase complexity, don't necessarily put the hole on the bottom of the jug. Uh, what we do in the other room is we have the ability to raise that jug. And then what I'll do is after he clearly understands uh, that food is coming from the jug, then I raise that jug pretty high where he cannot reach it. So what he, and then I teach him to move his bed over. And when he stands on his bed, he can reach the jug. The complexity in the foraging comes through. There's blankets on his bed. So he hits the jug. He now has to find the pellets in the blankets. And then some of those pellets fall back on the floor. So he's got to jump back off the bed, forage through what's on the floor. And then now that he's jumped off the bed, a lot of times the bed moves out of uh, position where it needs to be to forage through the jug. So then he's got to push the bed back over to the jug um, to get the rest of his breakfast. And some people may say, wow, that's a lot of crap. You don't really need to do all that. <clears throat> and my response is, I'm not the one that decides. It's the animal. And when you're working with species such as pigs, primates, parrots, oh, speak of the devil, um, you definitely want to increase the complexity of the enrichment because if you don't, then you're going to have a very smart, manipulative animal um, that is bored. All right. Um, that is one of the reasons I like to uh, keep and work with parrots because they're one of the most complex species I've ever worked with. Um, <laughs> he's not going to let me. So he's foraging for his food. Um, he's on an inter Rico is on an intermittent schedule of reinforcement of every once in a while when he says hi, I will, there's a hi, I will stand up and reinforce with a pine nut. So he's, he's foraging. Training, it could be foraging. One more time and I'll stand up and reinforce it. 
Um, okay, here we go. So when you're teaching an animal to forage, um, you want to start off where things the animal already knows how to do, okay? Yeah, coffee with Rico. Um, I know the birds are very quiet here this morning, the parrots. Do you know why? Well, you probably don't. Uh, because it's raining outside. That's why I love it when it rains, because it affects the birds and they all get nice and quiet. And when I travel, which I'm doing quite a bit, I'll be traveling again the end of the month. Um, when I travel, I, a lot of times I look at the weather. So uh, when it rains, I'm like, good. I'll take off when it starts raining because I don't want these birds to, to be bored here. It's actually pretty cold here today. 64 degrees here. <clears throat> Florian says, that, yes, the value of the toy is always decided by the animal, not us. Exactly, Florian. I can't agree with you more. And just like the, re the reinforcer is always decided by the animal, never us. Same thing with the punishers of person. Oh, you're take off. Um, so you want to talk about increasing complexity in foraging. Do you guys remember um, Kronos, the African tied crow? Are you testing me, Katie? Um, oops. Katie says, rain makes them quiet. Why? Um, yeah, barometric pressure. Um, I've, I learned that through training a lot of raptors. When it rains, I just don't go out and train. Uh, same thing happens with the birds. It's usually darker. Uh, parrots can't see well at night. It's very dark here this morning. Um, I love it. So, okay, where I was going with that. Oh. Do you remember Kronos, the African Pied Crow? We're going to talk about numerous different species. I don't know if Mano's on here this morning. I do a lot of presentations and uh, <clears throat> training for wildlife rehab centers. Um, a lot of people that are um, in, our trainers or wildlife rehabbers are in our level two online learning program membership. But you remember Kronos, the African Pied Crow? When he was here, I was just like, we were constantly just trying to keep him enriched because he wanted, oh, I'm sorry. He wanted to be trained. He liked that engagement and um, he wanted to be trained all the time. I, go, go! I couldn't train him all the time. Um, so we had to increase his level of complexity and he was in the enclosure that Milo the mini pig is in right now So I sat there we would place purchase different um, Places across his enclosure on purpose. You want to fine-tune your training skills? Train a crow um, Hi Anyways, I was like, okay what can Kronos do? He could do a lot of things and he could fly. So we taught him to forage on the ground through little foraging balls. Uh, we taught him to forage for his food on perches next to his perch. So I said, he can do this. Let me show you this photo and then I'm gonna do another live, I'll show you some more live stream foraging with let's say the dogs. We'll talk about contra freeloading and freeloading. So, um, hey, Deb, Deb's on here. Sorry, I was just um, taking a look at some of your comments. He's recovering from a serious tail injury and now he's very bored. Deb, it's Deb Jones, Dr. Deb Jones, where um, her and I are going to be presenting our first two day workshop ever together, October 13th and 14th. Um, Deb, the first thing that came to mind when you said that about options for your cat are, remember when we had the enrichment workshop here, the toy that you made for your dog? I'm thinking the same thing. And let's live stream that in level two because I just got done buying a bunch of PVC and making um, increased complexity for foraging toys for different animals with PVC. Let's do one with your cat. 
all right? Um, so anyways, here's Kronos. I'm gonna pull this photo up and I want to show you, but I was just like, he can fly and he can navigate that cage really well. I'm gonna show this, I'm gonna make it solo, get me off here so you guys can see more complex. All right, so we took a seagrass mat um, and we wrapped it in like a, a coil and then we tied it so it wouldn't unfold and then we shoved food on the inside. So not only are we increasing the complexity of the toy, but we increase the complexity of the foraging based on where the toy was located. Can you see how this toy is hung? It is hung from a chain and he is flying to it because we hung this toy in the center of the enclosure, nowhere near <clears throat> a perch. So he had to figure out how to fly to the toy and hang on to the toy while the toy is swinging back and forth. Um, and he had to try to manipulate to get that we had, uh, I think we probably had pine nuts wrapped up in paper cone cups shoved into the toy. Can you guys see that? Huh? Okay. Um, that was, fa I mean, in all the volunteers were in here just laughing and watching this. Um, yeah, because it, it was so fascinating. And I was like, he's going to get this. And you could just, you could see his mind working. He was sitting on a perch like, how am I going to get to this? Something else I used to do, um, I've trained a lot of crows. Maggie the crow was with me at my other house when we moved here to the center and I brought her here. I used to wear a pair of boots. Um, they were North Face boots, faux fur lined, and Maggie loved those. Owls like those too. Um, and they had a little zipper pocket on the side, and it was so cool. I taught Maggie to um, come over. Had to be careful because she would crows have a they uh, take things apart a lot by bam hitting it really hard. So they get that nice, really sharp beak that's now targeted to my angle. That yeah, I taught that. Um, <coughs> but I was just I was trying to teach him. The pounding is not what's going to get you the reinforcer. Unzip the zipper on the side of my uh, boot. And then he, I would either have a toy in there for him or treats in there for him. So I could sit here and continue to work while Maggie was jumping around the ground, foraging through pockets in the sides of my boots. Um, okay. Um, all right, let's do a, let me do some more training, live training examples or foraging examples with the dogs. This is all pretty basic introductory stuff, guys. What you want to do is make sure the animal understands. If foraging doesn't happen, it's usually the it taking two biggest steps, the animal does not understand. Um, hey, Aaron, good to see you. Um, Aaron's been here several times, Aaron Clauser. Um, the animal doesn't understand, or whatever they're foraging for is located someplace else in their enclosure, and um, or the, the foods you're using is not of high enough value. I've got two dogs patiently waiting for me to do something with them. Hi, Rico, I'm coming. So let's do something with them. And I'll just show you very basic foraging. I'm gonna put Quincy back in her crate so I can show you I'm working with Levi or deaf dog and I'll increase complexity and then I'll bring Quincy back into it because um, Levi tends to be a freeloader and lets uh, Quincy do all the work and then he just sits there and eats all the food that comes up. Not a stupid animal. Oh, yeah. 
So do you see, this is our food prep area, okay? See all these food, treats, goodies, all this stuff. Dog food, dog treats, canned dog food, baby food, popcorn, Nutri-berries, almonds, walnuts, Cheerios, sunflower seeds, pine nuts, bananas, different types of dog treats, um, bones, paper cone cups, um, you know, different types of powder. This is for the immune system. A lot of animals like this. We sprinkle this in food. Um, pine nuts, more dog treats. This is all up here on this table. Animals work for this stuff. All right, I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, quite the buffet. Okay, so here is my snow's dog food. Uh, here is other dog food over here somewhere. But snow works for most of her food throughout the day. And Okay, I'm going to show you what we do with Levi. This is where I would start. Levi's a freeloader, so he doesn't, he chooses not to work for majority of his food. So, and he's also deaf, so I have to keep in mind that if I throw this behind him, if he doesn't see it, he's not going to know it's there. So this is where I start increasing complexity. Hang on, this week. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I just start with letting him see me. Drop it. Just dropped another piece. I drop it close so he can easily see it. Because if I go like this, okay, come back. Then I'm going to start dropping more. Now I start dropping behind him. See, he didn't hear it. And now he's starting to search. He knows to start searching. And she's like, man, can I come out? So I start expanding where I'm dropping, reinforcing the behavior of searching. How can you tell? Because the behavior is maintaining and increasing. It's increasing pretty fast. I'm going to go over here and reinforce Quincy because she's so awesome. Staying in the Okay, now what I would really love, but this is, a, this is one way to feed, is once your animal knows this, then you can take that kibble. And this is what I do out here in the center. Willie, the turkey vulture, is sitting on her station waiting for me to come out and train her. Um, what I do is take this food and I will just chuck it. Levi's like, Levi just took off. Like, where'd you go? Um, I will chuck it numerous times throughout the day. I do that in the center because they can eat this in about one minute or it can take a good 30 minutes for them to eat it out in the grass. I will do, I do this with the pig. Um, in the backyard. Uh, I do it, I do this. Something else to do is in the fall when uh, there's a lot of leaves and you can sprinkle and uh, it out among the leaves, the wind blows, moves the leaves. It's great, yeah. Um, okay, I just wanna pay attention to what you guys are saying. Okay, good. Um, so what I do want Levi to do, which he is not doing, is I want him foraging in this bucket. But what he does is he just waits for Quincy to come up and move it. You can see, like, he's already looking on the ground for food. So something I could do is put yummier treats in here. I could lower this. because what he's not doing, he's not making the connection that treats food is coming from this. He's just looking at to the, onto the ground. So what I could start doing, I could do a couple different things. I could lower this. Yeah, see, he clearly does not understand that contingency. He just thinks dog food falls from the sky here. Yeah. <laughs> he 
he, he doesn't lie. <laughs> he knows it falls from me. Um, <coughs> um, what I could do is lower this. What I could do is make bigger holes on the side um, that is so easy for him to move this. Um, I could actually put some uh, meat spread or uh, soft canned dog food on the side so it causes him to hit this. And when he hits it, dog food comes out, all right? So in comes Quincy. Quincy's like, got this. See? He is a freeloader. So this is, Quincy's trained him well. He just lets Quincy hit the bucket. And he reaps the benefits. So now what I could do to start increasing the complexity of this is because Quincy clearly has it, is get a new jug and drill the holes on the side. So they, so she really has, and probably give her a little more chain so she can grab this and pick it up and drop it um, so the food comes from the side. Here's one of our favorites here. But it's so super simple. These guys figured it out so bad. Let's see. Let's sit. Stay. Let's show what we like. So Levi's got a really long tongue. He's gonna get that out, no problem. That is one of my favorites here. But these are all super simple, and we use this. Oh hi. I didn't ask you to come over here, but that's okay. Um, this is super simple, and we use this with numerous different animals. Um, you guys remember our work with Pocahontas, the African crested porcupine? Um, <coughs> yeah, really. Um, Pocahontas loved her rodent pellets more than any other food. So she got them for training or foraging only. You can take these, they're called holy rollers. Um, we use these with Milo as well. But you see, treats are gonna fall out of there fairly simple. So what we do is, I'll show you. It's pretty basic. We put treats in a paper towel. Put the paper towel in here. Okay. Got a Rottweiler patiently waiting for me to drop this. Yeah. Hey. Hey, we need you on camera. She's like, what did I do? Hey, quit moving. tricky little devil. So definitely needs to increase the complexity on that one. That's right, Rico. Okay, so um, like I said, those are all pretty basic and this is pretty much introduction to foraging. Um, you guys are going to want to pay attention if you're interested in stuff like this and you want to know next steps, more advancement. Um, pay attention to our website um, and our webinars. We're going to have numerous webinars coming up. Um, but this one for this Thursday, I know we're going to postpone that one for a little bit just until we get some other things on track here. Um, but we have webinars on all kinds of behaviors, teaching your animal to forage, um, uh, target training, understanding positive reinforcement, understanding um, learning theory, what have you, all kinds of stuff. That's on our website. Um, okay, let's see. Let me see what other pictures I have for you guys, and then we'll move on, if I can, to a couple 
different things. Um, one of the biggest foraging toys, uh, most popular foraging toys I have here at the center is um, training. Mm -hmm. I will see animals contra freeload for their food, many, meaning they prefer to work for their food versus taking identical free food at less effort. They prefer to work for it instead. eight different theories on why that happens. And yes, I do have a webinar on contra freeloading as well, because I'm a big promoter of contra freeloading um, and the things that affect it. Okay. Um, whoa, whoa. So here's Puzzles the Giraffe, again, foraging for his food. Pretty basic, but we just took a jolly ball, um, one we had here at the center, cut holes in it and would stick his willow, stick his brows in it, stick his willow leaves in it. Um, you'll see another uh, photo I have coming up of how we increase complexity with that. Um, it can increase complexity on how it's hung, where it's hung. I love things hanging from chains and away from walls, away from perches, stuff like that because the animal goes, this is my chain, this is my ball. The animal goes to grab the ball and the ball moves. Um, I was just sharing with Jackie out at Best Friends. We have a, some, an enrichment device we make here. We have a way to make that ball and chain even more complex. Um, and to see animals work for it is pretty amazing. So watching Sam. Sam's showing some different behaviors this morning that I'm not exactly, I've never seen him do before. Um, okay, so something else. Here's Quincy sitting here, continuing to forage for her bucket. Something else. I. Tr this is one that is always here, always in enclosures for multiple different species, not just birds. Think outside the box, guys. And this is uh, baffle cages. Um, we use baffle cages here all the time. They're wire baskets. You can fill them not only with food, but you can fill them with um, toy parts, increasing complexity of those toy parts. You can fill them with foraging toys. You can increase that complexity, how it's hung. We use this with the dogs. We use it with the pigs. We've not yet used it with the vulture, but it would be fabulous. Um, we may have a possum coming in for training. We could use it with him. Uh, this could easily have been used with Pocahontas, the African crested porcupine. You could definitely use this with uh, the giraffe. Um, I don't know who you couldn't use it with. Um, but what we do, we want to increase complexity, hang it from a chain, keep it away from the size of the enclosure. Um, Wrap it in cardboard, hang it on the outside of the cage. Yeah, yeah. And that's not mean. That's called foraging. It's called working for their food because if they're not working for it, they're probably bored. Um, I'm a huge promoter of empowering animals. Uh, also, uh, this helps prevent abnormal repetitive behaviors. Uh, Sam, the blind Amazon, where'd he go? He's got his food dish. Sam, the blind Amazon. We started teaching him to forage for his food uh, yesterday. And because he's blind, his perches have remained in the same place. I've already started introducing change to him. I do want things to be predictable. But as I see him advancing in his learning and in his training, you guys see how fast I'm moving with him. I'm not the one that determines that. Sam is telling me he's ready for the next one. and. That is what I saw in Sam when I met him two years of, two months ago at a helping ring. I was like, show me what he can do. She goes, oh, he clearly knows where his food dish is. And you open it. And he was like, boom, off the perch, down the side, on his food dish. And I looked and I said, oh, yeah, we can go places with this. So today I'm going to start teaching Sam to step up onto a dowel so I can move him from point A to point B. Yesterday, um, he's not used to being touched. I'm already touching him. We've included a different bell. Um, he's starting to learn to forage. I'm going to start incorporating new perches. This is moving a lot faster than what I thought it would move. 
but it is Sam, the one that's telling me next, next, next. He will bite you in a heartbeat. And he is a blind, fully flighted Amazon. You've seen how you've seen how I'm putting that on cue to let him know reach forward. I start with longer pieces of food and now I'm starting to hand him things as small as um, almond bits and Cheerios. So I am being very consistent. I will not make you do anything you don't want to do. You have all the choice in the world. You can even go right back in your cage anytime you want. You can tell me no. Um, and Sam is the one craving, give me more. And that is exactly what I am going to do. Uh, Lee, do I document my progress? Yes, I am taking videos of every step of the way. I will, um, turning it into a webinar. Um, I'll be turning it into a lot of things. I've got a couple things up my sleeve. I will also, we live stream this in the Parrot Project. So for those of you that are interested in parrots, learning um, what steps I take, all my live streaming is in the Parrot Project. Level one is more for companion, all companion owners wanting to know more about foraging, training and enrichment. Level two is more intense, where we're gonna start with a book club, or book review uh, this upcoming week. Okay, so you can, animals love to be enriched. That is the only reason I am a trainer, is because I like empowering animals. I like showing them you have choice. You tell me what you wanna do, you tell me what you don't like, and, um, I will empower you. Um, I will give you large enclosures. I will give you so many choices, control, and complexity. Here is a rabbit, my first rabbit ever that I trained, and I was in the back room at a zoo, and I was just like, all right, let's just, because using applied behavior analysis, environmental events to control behavior, works on every living thing. So I just showed him, and I was like, let's teach the rabbit to target. Why touch his nose to a target stick? Why? Um, and what we found is I was training him with Cheerios. When I dropped the Cheerios on the floor, he chose to continue target training. That is contra freeloading. He was telling me, I am finding the reinforcer paired with the mental stimulation of training more reinforcing than just eating the food for free at less effort off the ground. He, he chose to walk away from the food on the ground and chose to keep on training. So I trained this rabbit to touch his nose to a target stick. Then I started recall. Touch over here, touch over here. And then I trained him to, I showed them how you can use a target to get him to stand on his back legs. Deb, if you're still on here, maybe we just need to bring some rabbits to the workshop next month. So increasing complexity in foraging. We do this for the pigs. We do this for the dog. We buy those, uh, they're probably three inch plastic balls on Amazon, and then we load them in the pool. We fill the pool with water. We'll sprinkle in some dogs. <laughs> we'll sprinkle in some Cheerios, what have you. Um, um, thanks, Eva. Um, sprinkle in different food. Oh, something else? I am just running out of time. Dang it. This is a funny one. Uh, let's see what other photos I have up here because I know it's 10 a.m. And Sandy's about ready to walk in. So here is um, a giraffe foraging again through, that was the holy roller. I was standing right next to him, put it on a chain, and I just did it real quick. I threw the chain over the fence. And what was cool is he was searching for all his fruits and his um, leafy vegetables, and that ball kept rolling away from him. And in it, his head's way up here and his feet are way down there. So he can't like put his foot up and stop the ball. So this ball is moving all up and down the fence and keeping him greatly occupied. Um, so, hey Sandy. Ann says, your Moluccan does not like nuts, almonds, walnuts, pecans, anything with a shell. Who, I wouldn't start with anything with a shell. You, uh, I, yeah. Um, how do I get first to forage for those? Um, and and take, feel free to message me. Also take a look at our website with our uh, webinars. We have one specifically for teaching parrots to forage. 
Um, here's uh, another jug we do. This was, you can see Milo the pig in the background. Um, here's Molly the lemur that was here. Uh, we would stuff this with bananas, and then we slowly started shuffing, sh stuffing it with banana baby food. These are all very basic introductory. Um, don't take too big a step, or you'll see, you will see your animal start. It'll punish the behavior of the animal foraging for its food. Um, will your animal forage for its food? Yes. I have never met an animal that I could not get to forage for its food. Go, go! Um, with that being said, it is 10 o'clock. Um, this is our uh, email newsletter that goes out. We just sent this one out on understanding separation anxiety in numerous different species. Um, something else, don't forget the upcoming um, two-day workshop here at the Animal Behavior Center located in Northwest Ohio. We have four seats left, and once it's sold out, we are, we're not letting anybody else in because we want to give it that um, hands-on interaction and individual attention. Um, it's a two-day all-species workshop. Kim says, so glad I woke up early today, Laura. It was great to watch you work with Milo. Oh, thanks, Kim. Um, some other things, um, our projects and our memberships. There's level one for companion animals owners, level two for people who want more intense. These include podcasts, activities, uh, we're getting ready to start the uh, book review this week in level two. Uh, level two, we also do all types of zoo training. Um, level one is more for companion. We have the parrot project, the pig project. Those are species specific. You can find out all this information on our website at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com or feel free to email me. Now stay tuned. I've got some things coming up, what's coming up here in the upcoming weeks. You can also email me here at laura at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. I answer all those. Our book, our, um, book reviews coming up this coming week. Um, something else? Yes, we have. I have contacted. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I have contacted, um, we've gotten in touch with uh, Rescue Road Trips. We have an interview coming up with them. And that is the end of this week's Coffee with Critters. So thank you guys so much. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me. Sorry, I meant to take questions from you today, um, but I guess I talked too much. Nancy says foraging forever requires human oops, creativity. Yeah. So if you guys want to see Sam, um, I maybe I do a live stream a little bit later today with Sam. Okay. Um, also, I wanted to mention real quick for those of you that watched the live stream last week with Bird Talk Magazine, today is your last day to get the 25% discount. Don't forget when you go on uh, Bird Talk Magazine's website, um, the code is Coffee with Critters. All right? All right, guys. I'll see you a, bit, a little bit later today with Sam, who's rocking my world. I don't learn from easy because when we know better, we do better. See you guys.